What's up, Internet? My name is Michael Cook, and this is Blue Giant Media. We're here to help you find, learn, and play the games that you love. Today, we're going to take a look, set up, and play through the first couple rounds of Rudiger Dorn's Istanbul the Dice Game, published by AEG. Okay, Istanbul the Dice Game. If you haven't played Istanbul the original game, it is a worker placement game where you're going through a market racing to pick up, uh, you'd be the first one to get a certain number of rubies from the market. Uh, it's a great game, won some awards, and this one is definitely quicker, and I'll get into that more in my review, but I actually think I might like this one better, not because I think it's a better game, per se, but I just, I, for what it is, what it does, and kind of the, the people that I tend to play games with, and just what where it fits into my collection, I think I might end up liking this one. It might just get played more often than the other. So, uh, Game setup is explained nice and clear at the beginning here. We're going to walk through this step by step, just like I do in most of my, uh, in my Ready, Set, Play videos. So hopefully you can kind of walk along with me as we do this. Right now I'm just gonna unbag everything, get it set up. So maybe you just checked this game out, maybe you just uh, just purchased it and you're getting ready to play it for the first time, or maybe you are just checking the game uh, you just want to learn more about it, see how it plays a little bit, to see whether you want to buy it. Either way, hopefully this will give you a good idea. So, I'm just going through, start by unbagging everything and setting it out. I will be setting this game up as if there were two players playing, because that is what I tend to play pretty often. So, I will put these here. This is a nice summary card that shows, it's just, it's exactly the same on both sides, but it shows what you have at your disposal every turn. So I will use these to represent uh, each of the players and what they end up collecting on their turns. So, in a two or three player game, you will use this side of the board. In a four-player game, you will use this side of the board. So, since we have two players, we'll set it up like this. And what you're going to do is any of the spots on this board that have a red circle right there, those are the spots that you're going to populate with these rubies. So the point of this game is to be the first one to get to, in a two- or three-player game, to get six rubies. In a four-player game, you're trying to be the first one to get five rubies. And you're doing this basically to show the, uh, you know, the, the sultan, the king, the leader, what have you, <laughs> that you are worthy to be his personal, basically, shopping assistant, the one who goes out to the market and gets him what he needs. So you are trying to do that by demonstrating, hey, I am going to get the job done. All right, so these bottom spaces here have a three on them. So that means that they are only covered up in a three player game. And then we have these down here, which we will only need to have two of in a two player game, three in a three player game. I'm not quite sure why they didn't put a three on this one, but maybe they just figured it was self-explanatory. I believe it states in the rules that you can only collect this benefit once, especially since it says that you have to have five of these to do that and you can only have five once. It's not sets of five. I think it's, it's just the first time you get to five. Okay, then you will be determining who is the start player now that we've got everything mostly set up here. All right, so we place the game board out. We put the rubies in place. Next thing we're gonna do is make a little market with these. We'll pull out six of them. If you are familiar with Istanbul, the board game, these are like the mosques in there where you get to turn in a certain number of resources that give you a benefit for the rest of the game to make things easier for you. Okay, after those are set up, you just set this, uh, these cards somewhere accessible to all players. And then the next thing you're going to do is set out 
I don't, it says all that which we've done. Step six is you're going to grab these and you're going to determine who the start player is. And the start player will be receiving one of these crystals and the second player will receive one crystal and one coin. And then if there are more players, uh, you will be getting additional coins. Okay, so if there's a third player, they'll get two coins, fourth player, they'll get uh, three coins. Then you go to your turn. <clears throat> so turns go really quick in this game. All you do, sort of, it's not Yahtzee because you're just going to take the five dice and roll them once, but you do have the ability to spend one of these to re-roll. Um, and that does not cost an action. Once it is your turn, you will be taking two actions with the dice that, you, uh, that you've just rolled. You can choose to take income. To take income, you will just take as many dice as have the coin symbols on them. So if right now I just have one, I would choose one action is to use that, and I will take two coins. If I had four dice that had that, I would take eight coins. The next thing that you, uh, um, that's also something that can happen with the mosque tiles, but I'll get into that later. Um, so that's one thing that you can do, and that is put here, uh, right here in the middle. So let's just go from the top down though. I can take any two that are the same, so these two have yellow faces. If I choose to use that action, I get to basically bank one yellow good. So I set that here, and that'll be something that I can use going forward in the game. Next thing I can choose to do, let's say I don't have a lot of good options, I can take any two uh, faces that don't match, and I can turn them in to get one more reroll crystal. Next thing I can do here is turn in three different dice to collect and bank one crate, which is used as a wild token later on in the game. So I can just bank that. But the thing is, if I have used these two yellows, I cannot then reuse this yellow in another combination. You have five dice, and if you use two, then you have three left. You can't use the same die in two different combinations. Uh, you can also turn in four different, so if I turn in one of each of the four colors of goods, then I would be able to collect two of any goods of my choice. Not wilds, but any goods of my choice. I mentioned the ability to turn in the coin dice, uh, four coins. The next thing is the cards. So the card face, uh, if I have four of them, for instance, I'm going to take one, two, three, four of these cards, but I'm not gonna use them all. No matter how many you take, you still will only use one. But if I had one die, I just take one card and I do that, you know, that thing. If I have three dice with the card symbol, I draw three and choose one. So each of these has something that you can do and many of them have something that your opponents get to do as well. So this one, for instance, says that you get to take any one, or you, <laughs> you get to take one wild good token. Every other player gets to take one green good token. So good for you, or, but also decent for everybody else. This one right here says that if you have two wild goods, you can then get six coins. You don't turn them in, it just says if you've got them, you get an additional six coins. Alternatively, if you don't have that, you just get to collect one coin, but nobody else gets anything. So this is either great for you, and no one else gets anything, which is spectacular, or you get one coin, which is not very good. So kind of a, it, it's, you never know when you're gonna draw these, if it's gonna be something that is going to be fantastic for you, you just gotta be prepared. This one says that you get to have one green good and three coins while, I, while your opponents get either a green good or three coins. And then this one says that if you have, if you used two card dice faces to do this action, you get five coins. Otherwise you get one coin. So of these, it's a tough call. I, I might choose maybe these ones 
because I'm gonna be able to just take five coins and no one else gets anything, or I get a good in three coins. That's pretty good, but my opponents do get something as well. So, that said, it's basically a quick rules overview. Um, other things you can do, if I have a combat, and these can be a combination of die faces. So let's say I had a yellow, a yellow, I guess the, let's go with what's actually visible here. Let's say I had this rolled. I can take these two reds and my one red good, and I can claim one of these mosque tiles. So these mosque tiles, this one says that I collect three coins at the beginning of every turn for the rest of the game. This one says that I can do three actions or one additional action for every turn for the rest of the game. This one says that I get to, at the beginning of my turn, collect one reroll crystal every turn for the rest of the game. And this one says that I get to use one additional die when I roll at the beginning of every turn for the rest of the game. So I would get six dice. And then you can have more than one of these, so maybe you have seven or eight dice if you <laughs> if that's what you go for. And it can be really fun, but I have played this a couple times where one, one game I had six dice for, I got that on the first turn of the game. And for the rest of the game, I had six dice. And I barely won. The next game, I got one extra die on the second or third turn, and then later on in the game, I got a seventh die, and I lost. So, uh, and that first game was a tiebreaker that came down to, I ended up winning by the tiebreaker of one coin more than my opponent. So, uh, very tight game. Uh, next thing is you can do, and these are what actually matter, is you can turn in things to get rubies. So, <clears throat> if I wanted to do that, it would take either four green, later on five green, then later six green, or just basically whatever is revealed. So here it would take 12 coins to get this one. Once that's taken, the next person tends to spend 14 coins. This one is four, one of each good plus one additional good of your choice. And then these ones down here is once you have five mosque tiles, you collect one. So say on this first turn, I've got three different ones. I'm gonna take a wild, and then I've got that, so I'm gonna take four coins. Then my opponent, well they rolled three blues right out the gate, so maybe I do this. I'm gonna take my first mosque tile. And then I, I will take one of these, and this says <laughs> if I had three wilds, I could turn them in to one of each. Let me double check whether that's turn them into or get them in addition to. Wow, that is incredibly powerful. It says that if I possess three of those, then I get to take one of each. So if I had three wilds and did this, I would then get four of those for free. But I mean, if you have three wilds, you're probably going to have used them for something. So definitely would be a benefit if I had that. But as it is, I don't. So I just take the one coin. Then it goes back to my opponent. Okay, I got a couple cards. Not a lot of good stuff. Maybe I choose to use a reroll. And maybe I just reroll all of these because I'm happy having two cards. Oops, that was a card. Okay, three different ones again. It gives me a wild. Two cards, so I can draw two and pick one. Okay, so it says that I can turn any one good, but I only have wilds in to get two other goods. So that would have been nice, but I don't, let me double check. I don't think that, no, no, it does, it does say in the rule book, I can use a wild. So I can turn one wild in for any, uh, any two colors that I want. <clears throat> so maybe I do, yeah, oh yeah, it says down here at the bottom. 
a wild. If it has the red arrow, that means you have to discard that to get this. If it has the white arrow, that means you get it for free. So I'll do this one so my opponent doesn't get to do anything. Turning in a wild, and I'm going to get two goods of my choice. I will choose... Uh, maybe I'll choose a couple of the same here. Let's choose a couple reds. It seems to be some, it gives me some flexibility, not because I particularly want red, but because red gives me more options. <clears throat> now, um, turning in these goods to claim these takes an action. And turning in things to get those takes an action. So I think I need to, if I did do that wrong the first round, I'm sorry. Uh, this counts as an action. So if I use um, cards and then uh, dice to get goods, I can't also get a mosque or I can't also get a ruby. That costs one of my two actions per turn. So if I did that in this case, I'm sorry, don't do that. <laughs> All right, so beginning of this round, I get my three coins for free, and then I roll. Okay, so let's see. I could turn in three different ones and get a wild, or I could turn in these to get a blue, which I think I will do. And then I'll just do one card again. This says I can turn one mosque in for another mosque and then get uh, one bonus action. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to turn this one in and take this wild die because, or get the additional die because that's pretty cool. And then for my bonus action, I will get another reroll. <clears throat> All right, now we go over here. We've got, wow, three different ones again. So slow but steady over here. So now I have four reds, which I could use to get that. Did I put that on the top? No, I didn't, good. All right, so this one right here that I just turned over says anytime you take the money action, you also get a blue good. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I've played a game where I got a couple of those of different colors so that whenever I took the money action, I got two or three goods. And that's, <laughs> that's pretty powerful. Very good. You definitely want to try and find a way to deny an opponent that. Okay. Uh, well, I will go ahead and get four more money. All right, now this player gets one additional die now. Okay, oh, one of everything, nice. So I can take two goods of my choice. Well, I think I'm gonna take two blue, and then I will, for my second action, forego the card action and spend my three goods to get this mosque tile. Okay, and then only five dice come back over here. <clears throat> Okay, let's see. I can take a whole bunch of money, and I think I will do that because that's a lot of money. And then for my next action, let's see, I need 12 for that. So I can do one, two, three, four, five, six, and six more. So 12 coins to claim the first ruby. That was my second action over there. And over here, we've got six dice again. Okay, a couple options now. Hmm. I think I'm just gonna collect some goods though. Getting two goods is good. 
Then we come over here. We've got three different ones, which can let me claim a wild. Or I can do these cards. I'll do the cards first. So I can turn in three of any good of the same good. And in this instance, I don't believe I can use a wild because when I, it says here for a wild, it turns into something without a letter. Or I guess that means that I can turn a wild in at any time for, so actually no, I think I, I can turn that in for a red and then turn in three reds for a ruby from the supply. So that worked out quite nicely. Let me take a second to confirm that I did that correctly. All right, so yes, that is allowed, except the only difference is that I do not take it from the supply. I choose one spot out here. And since I know this player is going to be benefiting from money and probably taking the money action more, I'm going to take this one so that they have to spend more to do it. Okay? And that was that was just my first action over here. For the second action, oh crap, what was I gonna do? That was my first action over here. For my second action, I messed up. I already moved all of those things over there. Um, since I don't remember what I was going to do or what the die faces were, I'm just gonna grab one of these because I'm sure that was a possibility. Okay. So I will take the money action, because it gives me not just the money, but also a blue good. And then I will take a green. Over here, I'll take a yellow. And then I'll take four money. So I always roll if something is landed not flat. Personal preference. All right, I'm going to take, so I don't have a yellow over there still, but I will take another green and then it will turn in these three greens for another moss tile. So at this point you can see this player over here has three moss tiles but no rubies. So they're kind of playing the long game. They're getting off to a slow start. Three different, I'll take a wild, and then I will use the card. So it says I get four coins and my opponent can turn in a crystal for three coins. So I'll turn in one and take five. My opponent has two crystals, so they will happily turn that in. Turn in two and take five. Okay. And I keep forgetting to do that. All right. Well, I will use these to take four coins and a blue. And then I have three, four. Oh, I was supposed to draw one of these at the beginning of the turn. That says I could have turned in 10. So I just grabbed four, which means I had exactly 10. <laughs> That gives me that. And now instead of having that, I will have gotten four from this in the green. And then I will use these four to grab that one. And just like that, now this player has two rubies. So at this point, you see, I think, how the game goes. You play until somebody, and you keep track of who went first. So in this instance, this was the first player. This was the second player. 
So if this player reaches the goal of six rubies first, then this player gets an additional turn so that they both had the same number. But if this person gets the six rubies first, the game just ends there. If there is a tie, then you turn in <clears throat> at the end of the game, if there's a tie for the most rubies, the tie player sells their any leftover goods tokens for three coins each. So this would turn in for nine. And any unused crystals for two each. And then the player with the most coins is the winner. If they're still tied, then you're tied. All right, now you know how to set up this game and how to play it through. If you have any other questions about rules, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. If you want to know how this game looks unboxed or hear my full review of the game, you can check for links in the description below. And if you want to know where to buy this game, you can find a link to macronovagames.com in the description below as well. If you're looking for any videos that we haven't posted yet, information on games that you want to know more about, let us know. And if you're looking for a game that macronovagames.com does not have in their store, make sure to let them know too. Until next time, we want to thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, share the video if you like what you see, and have a wonderful day.